Well, hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts of the new Vogue collection of 2022. So this is the summer collection that Vogue just released this past weekend. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and some of the patterns that I feel like I would purchase. Uh, just to keep in mind, uh, these are just my thoughts and my opinions of the collection. I know a lot of these designers have worked really hard on this collection. So with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you first what I am wearing, and then we will go ahead and get into the video and I will tell you my thoughts of this new collection. So the top that I am wearing is actually a dress pattern from Berta Style. So this is the Berta Style 6220. I made it last year, it's such a cute dress but I wanted a top to go with the skirt that I was making at the time. And so I went ahead and hacked the pattern and turned it into a top. Now this is a part of my fall collection of last year. However, uh, even though it's summer, it is such a beautiful, beautiful uh, top to wear. All right, so let's go ahead and get into talking about this new Vogue summer collection. So if you watched my previous video where I gave my thoughts on the Simplicity Summer Collection, then you know I talked a little bit about what we could expect to see with the big four pattern companies this summer. And one of the things I mentioned is uh, cutouts because cutouts is trending for 2022. And I thought we are definitely going to see a lot of cutouts because that's the trend, the fashion trend for 2022. And lo and behold, if you look throughout the Vogue collection, you'll see there are a lot of cutouts, deep V necklines, because those are the trends. Now, I'm not one who actually wear a lot of DV V necklines or cutouts. And so for that reason, I will not be purchasing a lot of these patterns. However, they are cute patterns. And if this is your forte, then you probably will like a lot of these different patterns that's within this collection. So let's go ahead and start with the Vogue V1881. This is a Mrs. Dress. You have uh, ties that go around the back of the neck. So it's is a tie that is connected to your bodice there and you have a deep v neckline you have gathers underneath the bust an empire waistline uh, there's a high low hem for the dress and then you also you're putting a ruffle around the skirt portion of the pattern and it's just a cute it's a cute little dress, but like I said, this isn't something that I will wear because I don't wear open back dresses or DV v necklines, halter tops, those types of things. I just don't wear those types of garments. However, uh, this is an average pattern that is figure flattering for all body types. So I think that that's a really cute pattern. Now, if you're someone like me who go for modest and plain, the V1878 dress would probably be right up your alley. This is a, a pattern that is figure flattering for uh, your upside down triangles, which is me, your pear shape, and then also for your hourglass figure. It's a fitted and flare dress. It has a close fitting uh, bodice, uh, a shaped yoke. It has a flared skirt, an invisible back zipper with the hook and eye closure, and uh, it has a handkerchief um, for your hem. Now, I am not one for handkerchief hems. However, it will be really easy to alter this pattern and uh, cut it just above that, um, just above the skirt where the the triangles uh, meet at the bottom of the hem to make the handkerchief skirt. You can go ahead and round that off and then just have a, a really nice rounded uh, hem if that's something that you would be more interested in. I think this is a really nice dress that you can wear to a special occasion, you know, like a wedding or something like that, depending on your fabric choice. And speaking of fabric choices, let's see what the fabric choice. So here they are calling for uh, medium weight crepe fabrics, linen blends, and rayon chalet for this uh, particular pattern. So I think, again, that would be really uh, nice for a, a special occasion or something like that. There's the V1882. Now with this pattern, you have uh, two different hem variations. So you can make a short dress or you can make a long dress. It has a fitted bodice with princess seams and then a flared skirt. 
and it looks like uh those princess seams extend down into the skirt uh you have an empire waistline uh, it has a uh, cut shoulders dv neckline and you have uh, side seam pockets. There's some top stitching with this. You're going to be inserting a bag zipper for your closure. And then you also have cup sizes and those cup sizes are A, B, C, and D. So that will be a really nice evening gown as well. There's also the Vogue V1879, which is a pattern that has a really D, V uh, cut out in the back. So again, like I said, you're going to see a lot of these uh, cutout patterns here. This is an advanced pattern, figure flattering for your hourglass, your upside down triangle, and then your pear shape. It is a bias cut A-line dress, close fitting through the bust. You uh, do have a lining that you are inserting inside the dress. You have um, a front darts, a DV uh, back, as I said before. Uh, you also have a, a bag zipper that you're going to be inserting into the back. So that'll be your closure. Uh, and then you also will be attaching hook and eyes. It's calling for uh, fabrics such as Makedo. I believe that's how you say that. Wool crepe, silk Dupont, And for your lining, you need Charmeuse or China silk. So again, you're working with those fine fabrics. So that's probably another reason why is for your advanced uh, sewist. Then there's the Vogue V1883, which is a cross halter top dress. It is uh, rated for your average sewist. And for in terms of figure flattering, it's stating that it is figure flattering for your hourglass figure, your upside down triangle and then your pear shaped individuals. So um, it's fully lined, a flared skirt, pleats at the uh, waistline, an invisible zipper, it's calling for an invisible zipper and a hook and eye closure and a stitched hem. So yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty cute dress and I think this would also be really cute for your evening um, dress as well. It's calling for fabrics such as crepe, Satin, rayon, chalet, and then also broadcloth. And for your lining, it's just asking you to uh, make something with a simple lining fabric. So it might be like your polyester fabrics and things of that nature. There's the Vogue V1884. Now this is a cute dress and I would actually buy this dress um, if it weren't for the the sides of the dress. It has like this awkward uh, gathering on the side of the dress. The description says that it is a line dress with a close fitting bodice and uh, you have a wide square neckline, a flared skirt with the diagonal gathers under the waistline. So if it wasn't for that uh, gathering on the side of the skirt i think i would actually purchase it but i don't like the way that the the gathers go on the diagonal over there but other than that i think it's a really cute uh skirt i actually like the the neckline of the bodice so that's really nice um it's calling for an invisible zipper a stitch hem you will need horse braid hair and i'm assuming that's going to be for your hem so that you can give your hem um, some stability and so it can flare out. Um, and then it also comes with uh, cup sizes and so you can choose A, B, C, or D uh, cup size. Here's a vintage Vogue dress. It's the V1885. Uh, it's uh, called the Mrs. Special Occasion Dress for advanced uh, sewists. Figure flattering for your hourglass your uh, rectangle, and then also your uh, pear shape uh, individuals. So you can make an evening or a mid knee length scrapless dress. It's uh, gathered onto a full underdress with a foundation. You have self bias tube bow that you can use for the front or you can make a ribbon bow underneath your bust line there. 
the hem is two and a quarter inches oh my goodness that's that's pretty wide and um for the underlining it's a narrow hem for your your shears now it is calling for brocade crepe satin and silk type fabrics and for your underdress it's calling for sheer fabrics such as chiffon and voile type fabrics your foundation can also be taffeta and the underlining can be china china silk as well the vogue v1886 it also reminds me of a vintage pattern um, this is a very loose fitting pullover evening uh, length caftan it has a front oval and back scooped neckline side front and side seams i'm sorry side front and side back seams no side seams I, I think they <laughs> they worded that a little weird. So I'm thinking that you don't have, so you have uh, seams in the front and seams in the back because you have a middle panel for the front and a middle panel for the back, but there are no side seams. And then you have a slightly above elbow length shaped cape uh, that's with sleeves that is extending down to the hemline. And uh, you will be doing some top stitching there. And for your fabrics, it's calling for crepe de chine, crepe, uh, and chalet type fabrics. Now, this is an interesting top and dress. It's the Vogue V1888. So this is a pattern that is rated for average. And it is figure flattering for all body types. It's a loose fitting pullover top that have a low V neckline. Uh, a ruching that is on the bodice, a bias neck, armhole facings, drop shoulders, uh, you have front ties, an elastic waist, and you have different length variations. So including um, a, a skirt length variation, and then you can make a top. I think this is really interesting how you have, um, you know, the elastic going across the shoulders and then under the bodice and then um, below the waist there. I think that's really interesting. And um, I'm not sure if I would buy it just simply because of the DV neck. I know that might be a simple change that you can you can make and alter, but I, I don't know if I would, I would make that. That just seems to be too much uh, gathering and too much elastic for me. So, uh, but I think it is very cute. Now this is a pattern that I actually would buy. It is the Vogue V1893. So you have a uh, Mrs. Top, shorts, and a skirt in this pattern. I would like to make the skirt and the shorts out of this pattern. I might even make the halter top and like put it underneath or put it over top, sorry, a button up white type shirt. I think that would be really cute. This is an average pattern and it is uh, designated for your hourglass, your upside down triangles and your pair of shapes. It's a close fitting line bra top that have uh, seams in the cup. Uh, you are going to be doing some top stitching on the, on the um, bralette thing, the bra top. Then there's a separating zipper that you will place in the back of the top you have for the shorts they are high-rise semi-fitted shorts have front pockets with reverse construction bands button trim back darts stitched hems and you will be doing some top stitching for the shorts as well the skirt um, has pleats and a very um, low hem in the back and a high hem in the front uh, the wrong size will show on the back. So I think you need to make sure that you choose your fabric accordingly. If you don't want your the back of your fabric showing, you might need to get like a double face uh, fabric or something like that. Here's another one that I think I would buy. This is the Vogue V1890. This is a Mrs. Skirt and you can make it in two different lengths. So you have a... Um, above the knee length or right at the knee length and then you have a maxi length um, 
version. This is uh, classified as easy. So this might be for like your advanced beginners. Um, it's figure flattering for your hourglass, your upside down triangle, and then your pear shape. So it's a flared skirt, have a contoured waistband with button front uh, fly closure, side pockets. You have front and back unpressed pleats and a narrow hem. And then again, your different length variations there. There's the Vogue V1891. So you have a jacket and pants. Now, um, this, I don't know if I would say that this is a summer pattern just simply because it seems very hot to me. And it could just be because we're just experiencing some very extreme temperatures here where I am at. And just looking at this picture, I'm just like hot just looking at the picture. It has a hood and long sleeves and you have uh, these long sleeve, um, uh, you have a long sleeve jacket, it's oversized and you have uh, these long pants as well. So I, I just feel just hot just looking at the pattern, but it's a loose fitting unlined topper with asymmetrical hem, raglan sleeves with white cuffs, side panel and hood. Uh, view A has a separating front zipper, side seam pockets, and you need to purchase bias binding for the armhole facings. Um, for view B, you have uh, a front uh, button and thread loop closure and contrast sleeves, uh, French seams, and uh, you also are going to be purchasing bias binding. And then you also have the pull on pants that um, have a draped inside bag or sorry, inside leg. <laughs> and like I said, it just seems very, very hot to me. And it's not a pattern that I actually would make for the summer. So this is the Vogue V1894. So it's a swimsuit. It's an average um, rating and it's figure flattering for all body types. It's a line swimsuit that have a contrast narrow binding. Uh, you have your ruching, um, your front cut out, and then you also have leg openings that you're going to be finishing with elastic. Uh, you have for view A is a halter style with a tie in the back and for view B you have narrow straps. So that's for your missus swimsuit. Uh, but again, it's there for those of you who don't have a, a swimsuit and you're looking for something that is uh, pretty simple to sew. This is um, is um, designed for your average sewist. And then for your men's swimsuits, you have uh, the Vogue V1897. So you have um, a pair of shorts. You have two pairs of shorts some trunks and then a, a tank so this is also rated as average and uh it's saying that view a has a fly front zipper closer uh, with a flat pocket and elastic for the back and then also you have side seam pockets for view b it has a contrast um, and you're going to purchase bias binding and elastic for your waist Views A and B have fitted lining with elastic at the leg opening. And then for view C, you also are going to be um, using a lining and um, elastic for the leg opening. For view D, um, this is your tank. Um, it has a stitched hem and it says you can complete the look with uh, white buttons. And you have the Vogue V1896, which is the men's shorts and pants. Um, very similar to a few of the patterns that Vogue came out for men a couple years ago. So I don't think that this is anything different from um, some of the pants that I've seen in the past. And I've actually made my husband a pair of pants um, from a Vogue pattern. I cannot remember the number, but um, looks very similar to this pattern here. So again, uh, I'm not too impressed. Uh, this is uh, rated for average sewist. Uh, you have your shorts and your pants that have a waistband with the hook and eye closure, a fly front zipper. Top stitching is going to be on your pockets. 
back uh, welts. So you have your back uh, welt pockets and then you have belt loops and then also a stitched hem that you're going to be doing there. And then there is the Vogue V1895, which is a men's shorts, shirt and pants. So this is also rated as average. It's a pop over semi fitted shirt that have a front placket collar and collar band front pockets with flaps and yoke and set in sleeves. So that's, that's nice. You have your set in sleeves, stitch hems with side slits and top stitching. So that's for your top, um, for view a, for your, uh, short sleeves, you can, uh, do the, the short sleeves with the stitch hem. And then also it's calling for top stitching. I don't know if I said that or not, but it's calling for top stitching. Now for your shorts, you have, I'm sorry, your pants, you have uh, men's mid rise jeans are fitted, tapered below the waist, have a fly zipper, a waistband with belt carriers, a back yoke, back patch pockets, front pockets, and a coin pocket and top stitching detail. So you have all of that. Um, so views A and B are essentially the same uh, shirt. It's just uh, you could do either a short sleeve or a long sleeve. With the long sleeve version, you will you do have um, a band at the end of the wrist. And uh, so you have, have that. And then for view C and D, you have basically, it's the same pattern but you have the choice of making either shorts or pants. So I don't know if I made that clear or not, but that's basically all four views within that pattern. So that is the summer of 2022 Vogue pattern release. So as I mentioned before, I'm not um, interested in a lot of the cutouts. However, I will probably purchase the pattern with the shorts and the skirt. And then also the pattern that has the, it's a skirt that have the soft pleats and the, the, the fly on the front. So those are the two patterns I would probably purchase from this collection. I didn't see anything from this collection that was really um, inspiring me to, to purchase uh, the patterns all that much because I have a lot of patterns and I'm just trying to be really conscious about the patterns that I actually pick up nowadays because I just can't fit all the patterns um, in my craft room anymore because I just, I have so many patterns. So anyway, let me know your thoughts of the Vogue, uh, collection here let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below if you liked any of the patterns if you did which patterns would you you purchase and which patterns you're dying to to get a copy of i hope you all had fun watching today's video if you did please make sure that you give me a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already please make sure that you subscribe to the channel 